Merstastic, am I right? It's not really a word that's very commonly used. So grab a coffee or your preferred beverage and let's get ready for everything that you need to know about Meshtastic. Meshtastic is an open source mesh network protocol built on cheap LoRa radios. It lets you send encrypted text messages, location, or even sensor data over long distances without cellular or internet. Crazy, right? Each Meshtastic node, like the TTGO LoRa32, uses a Sentec LoRa transceiver to rebroadcast messages from nearby nodes, creating basically a peer-to-peer -peer mesh. Because it uses unlicensed sub-gigahertz bands, absolutely no radio license is needed. In practice, any two Meshtastic radios in range will automatically connect and relay each other's messages. Users typically pair one radio at a time with a smartphone via Bluetooth using the Meshtastic app. This lets you type messages on your phone, which the radio then sends into the mesh. It's great for long-range off-grid messaging. LoRa radios can reach miles, even a 10 plus mile line of sight, by hopping through immediate nodes. The mesh automatically floods messages a few hops out to extend range. For Meshtastic, absolutely no hub is required, making it great for encryption and decentralization, since each node both sends and relays. All traffic is IES encrypted by default, so only nodes with the same key can read messages. Each device can pair with one Android or iOS device at a time. The phone app, available on Google Play or the App Store, is used to compose messages, configure settings such as channels, keys, etc., and of course, view incoming texts. If you're really fancy, you can also get nodes that come with a pre-built screen. This can be used to show received messages, status, or even packs counter stats. Not to mention that LoRa transmissions are incredibly power efficient, so devices can run on small LiPo batteries for days or even week in between charges. These design choices make Meshtastic ideal for off-grid communications, whether that is texting or coordinating. In simple terms, you can think of it as an offline SMS network. You leave one device at home or carry it in your backpack, and it simply relays messages between friends' devices or to your phone, even when there's absolutely no phone signal. But what are its actual capabilities? The long-range LoRa mesh uses sub-gigahertz LoRa, the most commonly encountered being the 868 MHz, but of course without omitting the 433 and the 915 variants. These can be used for kilometer range links. One user even reached 3.5 miles in a town and 10 miles via hilltop node without any single cell tower present. Each node repeats received packages up to several hoops, extending the network coverage. By default, each message hops up to three times. You can build mesh networks over a neighborhood or rural area by scattering only a few radios. All completely legal, of course. It allows you to send private text messages or preset canned replies between radios or groups. And as I said, all messages are AES encrypted, so nobody will eavesdrop on your business. Some even fancier nodes even come with GPS, although it's more rare to find. If a node has GPS or you set a fixed position for it, it will periodically broadcast its coordinates so others can see where everyone is on a map. This is incredibly useful for group tracking on hikes or in emergency situations. And if you thought that it couldn't give you any more, Meshtastic also supports custom apps for things like temperature, humidity, or even low bitrate audio. You can attach sensors to nodes to monitor environment data all across your mesh. Besides the previously stated fact that LoRa is incredibly low power, it builds on top of that by allowing nodes to slip in between transmissions, extending its relatively long lifespan even more. Besides the mobile app, there's also a Python CLI and web interface for sending or receiving messages. There's also even Meshtastic software for Linux, which allows you to turn absolutely every Raspberry Pi into a Meshtastic node if you have a LoRa head, of course. If you're a city boy like me, you probably didn't hear that much about Meshtastic. Actual users report keeping Meshtastic radios on hand for blackouts or disasters. If cell towers or internet fail, the mesh still lets you ping family or even coordinate help. Several even said that they use it 
in case of outages. It's incredibly useful for outdoorsy people. Whether you're going hiking, camping, kayaking, paragliding, skydiving, bungee jumping, or to your local Aldi. So basically anywhere where cell service is poor or non-existent. Friends that spread out on trails or ski runs can text each other and track location. As one user said, Meshtastic was primarily used in areas with no cell service. Meshtastic isn't a last resort solution for the apocalypse. It can also be used at rallies, festivals, or sports events where cell service is actually overloaded instead of non-existent. Some users use it at music festivals or ham radio meets to track and chat with friends without Wi-Fi congestion. The built-in PAX counter firmware can even count nearby Wi-Fi or Bluetooth devices to estimate crowd sizes. For a more family-oriented use, parents even give radios to kids on playdates or attach one to a pet's collar, then only ping for a location update if lost. One user literally pings a child for location. Neighborhood watch groups or off-grid communities set up private channels. For instance, user surveys from Seed Studio show communities building local emergency networks with Meshtastic for when their main system fails, which means that those annoying HOA messages will become unescapable. Enthusiasts integrate Meshtastic with home automation via MQTT or Home Assistant, so data from remote sensors becomes accessible over the internet, making use of the low bandwidth telemetry. Creative users have built all sorts of projects with Meshtastic. For example, one user has created a BBS, or a bulletin board system, with classic games such as tic-tac-toe, escape room puzzles, and much more, that runs exclusively over a Meshtastic network. Others 3D print custom cases, mount radios on drones or bikes, or even build DIY nodes using alternative hardware. The Meshtastic community is actually very active and very inventive at that. A few highlights include, well, DIY radio nodes. You don't have to buy a ready-made board. You can just make it at home. Hobbyists have created Meshtastic nodes using cheap microcontrollers. For example, a Hackaday project shows using a Nordic NRF52840 module plus a LoRa RA02 chip to make a working mesh node for only $12. This custom node runs Meshtastic via Bluetooth. Though it has no Wi-Fi, such DIY builds can be very low cost and compact. Commercial projects like RAK's WISMESH gateway boards via Ethernet or Wi-Fi can let you connect a Meshtastic node to the Internet via MQTT. If self-sustainable meshes are on your bucket list, find out that many users power their nodes via solar panels and rugged cases. The SenseCap T1000E is a waterproof Meshtastic device supported by Meshtastic, with actual built-in solar and GPS. Others hack battery packs or attach LoRa mesh modules to weather stations or APRS gear. Did I also say that it comes with an integrated PAX counter? For example, the LiliGo LoRa 32 often ships with PAX counter firmware, which basically counts phones around you right out of the box. Although this is not a core Meshtastic function, it shows how the hardware is also used for creative wireless analytics. I mentioned earlier that some boards have screens. The LoRa 32 that we will be using has a built-in screen. Well, what if I told you that you can build custom UIs for this? Community developers have built alternate display UIs like MUI, a touchscreen interface, and even added experimental features, audio over LoRa, integrated MQTT cloud, and so much more. Official Meshtastic releases, such as v2.6 and later, continue to add user-friendly features based on community feedback, which is very nice to see. Meshtastic is ever-evolving. Preview releases in 2025 added features like revamped device UI or base UI with menus and time display, Linux joystick support, and next hop routing for more efficient direct messages. Future releases will continue enhancing usability, a big example being the constant update of key verification between nodes. Meshtastic now even offers a site planner 
so you can simulate the coverage map for your nodes. You enter antenna heights, power location, and it predicts range on a map. This helps to plan large developments. For example, if you and your friend at the other side of the city want to communicate. The Meshtastic Designer, or Rack Wireless, is a new online configurator which lets you pick with block modules, sensors, solar panel cases, etc., and see a 3D preview of the complete hardware Meshtastic build. This, of course, encourages creative setups like solar powered sensor networks or even waterproof stations. The ecosystem keeps growing day by day. Besides the Liligo boards, there are Seed Studio boards, such as the SenseCap, and of course, our beloved Heltec and others such as Elecro, NRF boards, or LoRa handheld. If new LoRa boards appear, the firmware often adds support. Projects like Disaster.radio also build on Meshtastic-like tech for solar-powered community networks. But enough blabbing on, let's get down to a basic bare-bones setup of the Meshtastic firmware right onto your board. Here I have the Liligo TTGO LoRa32 V1.6. For the hardware prep, make sure that your antenna is connected to the SMA jack. As Mastastic actually warns that if the antenna is not connected and the board is powered on, this can damage the radio. Unfortunately for this board, it works via micro USB, which is not necessarily something that I like, but I guess this is what happens with older boards. Thankfully, I have a handy dandy data micro USB and USB cable on hand. Make sure that your cable has data capabilities. Additionally, the board also includes a JST battery connector. My board flashes directly into Meshtastic because I did some tests before filming, but that is absolutely irrelevant as we will be flashing the board anew. All of the resources are readily available on the Meshtastic official website. Here you have an overview of all the supported devices, as well as the needed drivers to run the system and to flash the firmware. We will be using the Meshtastic online flasher for that. Simply go to flasher.meshtastic.org. Select the board, in our case of course is the LoRa32 V1.6, and we will be wanting to use the most recent stable version. In this case is 60EC. 05e beta. Once your board is selected and you know what firmware you want flashed, you can just flash it. This will prompt you to ensure that your device is plugged in, to choose the baud rate, and of course we will want a full erase and install. We can of course set up the web bundle UI, but we will not be going over this in this video. Erase, flash, and install. You will be prompted with a window asking you to choose your serial port. I know for a fact that mine is the serial port 7. Once it's beginning to flash, this will take a while. Ha, <laughs> ironic. While this is flashing, of course, do not forget to hydrate. <laughs> nice. And it seems like it's restarting and it's resetting. And it says, set the region using the Meshtastic Android, iOS, web or CLI clients. Well. This is because while we have flashed the Meshtastic firmware on, it is yet to be configured. So we are not yet using the bandwidth for Europe. Our current endeavors on the browser have finished. And we will now switch to using the mobile app to finish the configuration. On your mobile phone, search for and install the Meshtastic app. Once installed, open it. You will be prompted with a quick tutorial for the setup. We can skip through that. Now we must Press on the plus icon to add a new device. This will connect to the board's Bluetooth module. If your Bluetooth is connected, that is. There you go. And we can just click on the Meshtastic board. Now that a prompt has appeared to pair with the Meshtastic and we have the code on the board, we can simply type that code to fulfill the connection. Once the code has been inputted, it will disappear from the board and a connection will be established. And there you have it. You have currently connected to your Meshtastic board via Bluetooth, and you can monitor all of its details from the Meshtastic app. Here, it is incredibly important that you do set up your region. This is done here, under region, and we will be using the European Union 868 megahertz. Send, and of course, it will pop an error. This is because the 
board has received the data and is now rebooting. Once the board has been rebooted, let's add some more configurations. First, we will go into the radio configuration and set up the display. In here, we want the screen carousel to be set at a 5 second interval. Each mesh tastic has multiple pages. Inherently, the software does not cycle through any of those pages. You have to do that manually. Of course, we do send and it will confirm the delivery. The board will now cycle through the pages. It will show us the time and of course if we reset the board we can see at the top that we have EU868 which was the previously set up bandwidth. It is important that you choose the same region on all of your devices or they won't talk. Next check the default channel. This is usually a long fast. You can leave it as it is or define a private channel with a new name and a new key. This is done of course under channels where you can view the current key of your channel. This is a preset, the hops, and of course the name of the channel. This specific board that I'm using of course does not have a GPS board included, but if you have a GPS module embedded or a GPS antenna separately, as it also has a Molex connector right down here, yes, you can enable location reporting in the app. As you can see, I have the GPS mode as not present. Otherwise, you can set a fixed location in the app settings for mapping. I will of course not be doing this on camera because I don't want to dox myself. It also provides a QR code and a meshtastic link to link up to your current node. Don't bother to scan this code, I will be reflashing the board after this video. It can give you your precise location within the app. Yes, there I am in Denmark. Who the funk? Here you have access to your complete mesh system. You have a board overview with all of the details about your node. Since I only set up a single node, my mesh is rather not populated. Then there's of course the chatting. It looks exactly like any other normal messenger that you would find. To test this out, ensure that two or more radios with the same channel and key are on and have line of sight, even a few kilometers apart. Send the text from your phone and the message should appear on the radio's display and on, well, any phone paired to it. You can also open the neighboring nodes list to see who's in range, the mesh that I have just shown. It would be futile for me to send a message right now as I only have set up a single node, which means that the message will not be acknowledged since this node will continue to rebroadcast the message until other nodes accept its message which will never happen since there's no other nodes that have the same channel or the same key as this one. So there you have it, quick rundown, even quicker setup, and this completes, well, the video. For more details, you can always refer to Meshtastic's documents. Once running, you have your own private LoRa mesh network for messaging and more. Meshtastic has a vibrant community of makers and first responders, so you can always get the help that you need with your setup, whether it is by accessing the GitHub repository with all of the information and firmware of Meshtastic, joining their official Discord, or maybe ours, we kind of like post projects and stuff, it's pretty cool down there, or refer to the official Meshtastic documentation. They have great vlogs and forums on the matter. Well, I hope you learned something today, and if you did, Make sure to check out our other vlogs as well at Ebit.